Yeah, so greetings, gentlemen. Uh, welcome to uh, Kente Arts Alliance uh, website, history, story of Pittsburgh jazz. And uh, recognizing the fact that you gentlemen are two of the elder statesmen of the Pittsburgh scene today. I right. uh, appreciate you uh, coming here today to tell us some of your story. Um, Mr. Clark, please uh, tell us Harry Clark. Yeah, where you Dr. say Mr. Harry Clark. you say Mr. Clark, now we're talking Clark. <laughs> Mr. Clark was my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, right. so uh, tell us about yourself. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Harry Clark, Mr. Harry Clark. Uh, okay. <laughs> Been a resident of Pittsburgh uh, since birth. Actually, I was born in the North Hills and uh, moved to, got married, moved to Penn Hills, mm -hmm. and then moved to Squirrel Hill. So a lot of hills. <laughs> hey, hey, a lot of hills in Pittsburgh. Oh, Everywhere you go, practically is a hill. But uh, got launched for, from the music program uh, in, in, in uh, North Hills and had a whole world of discovery. When I, when I was a child, actually my, my sister and I, my mom and dad, <clears throat> we had an old 40 Ford. And you know, my, my uh, parents would take us up to uh, the Hill District. It was alive. Mm -hmm. Jump. And we'd go up to, remember Hot Sauce Williams? Oh, yeah. Hot Sauce Williams. Reese Williams. Yeah, Reese Williams. <laughs> and and, and, and what, it was my dad's way of giving us some sort of a, a hit, kind of a quick study, a history. I, you know, I didn't know. I just wanted the sandwich. But he'd mm -hmm. go up and he would order the sandwich. We would sit in the car. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't sit in the restaurant. We would sit in the car and eat the, the, the uh, barbecue sandwich. Put that wax paper and then mm -hmm. white bread in <laughs> that sauce, and the sauce would be all in the the white bread and be all something. But that was the best eaten ever. Mm -hmm. And what I was able to to discern from what he was trying to tell us, he was showing us a community, a cross section of, you name it, the best dressers, mm -hmm. the street walkers. Mm -hmm. The music, the smell, the food, all of that was there. Mm -hmm. And what he was trying to do, because we lived in, as I said, we lived in the North Hills. And the, the, that was what my introduction to the Hill District was. And <clears throat> more and more, I realized, listening to that music, that one, I didn't realize it really, that one day I'd be sitting up on the Crawford Grill, listening to these musicians, that we're actually doing it here in Pittsburgh. So that's, a, that's how I got exposed to, and then of course the discovery of turning on a radio, and, and way down in the corner of that radio, you start hearing some music you didn't hear before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that so was father was basically giving you a cultural introduction. Cultural introduction, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. And I'll never forget that. What a blessing. That. Well, I'll never forget mm -hmm. that. All right, what about you, Carl? What about your history, Mr. Carl Murphy? Well, I guess, well, I come in the world in a little, little country town called Smithdale, PA. Smithdale. Yeah, and uh, that's out in uh, Elizabeth Township mm -hmm. on the Allegheny and Westmoreland County line. Okay. And uh, I grew up in a musical family. Mm -hmm. My brother, my old, next to the oldest brother, it was, uh, they said he was sort of like a little Garner type cat on the piano. Oh. Mm. And my mother played ragtime piano. All right. And my dad was, uh, Guitars. I mean, his dad used to play for the white folks out of Alabama. Oh, wow. His dad played the violin, and, and uh, but my dad played the guitar. Oh, okay. So the okay. musical background was there, you yeah, know. Yeah. My brother Robert, he was a drummer. He had most of the cats, but all the guys know him. You know, they mm. call him Ham mm, yeah. or Hamp. You know, yeah. Yeah, Hamp Murphy. But uh, I moved to Pittsburgh. I think it was nineteen. 1951, I came, my brother lived, one of my oldest brothers lived over there in Broadhead Manor. Mm. And he wanted me to come in and stay with them and they, I went to school at Langley. Langley, here. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And uh, while going to high school, where I lived at, uh, some of the great musicians like Bobby Boswell, Bobby. <laughs> he lived over there and a few of the 
major cats. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, there was always some music going on. And then I used to go downtown and hang out outside the joints because I couldn't go in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember Charlie Parker came to town. He's the Carnival Lounge. Carnival Lounge, yeah. And I, I remember that. I wanted to go see Charlie Parker. Mm -hmm. So I'm standing outside and I'm trying to sneak in. So the guy said, So, boy, you can't come in here. I said, I want to see Charlie Parker. He said, You can stand there and listen to him, but you can't come, come in. in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but the music is honest to God, man. It was such a thing with me. The music hit me and I couldn't turn it loose. Draw you in? Oh, man. man so, <laughs> Pittsburgh had so much music at that time, mm -hmm. you know. Like even like Eric was saying, that Hill District was, oh, oh that was a mecca, man. Mm -hmm. it, it, you, you, you know, you could actually go from one club, listen, have a drink, and then walk to another club That's where right. somebody else was playing. That's mm -hmm. right. Within walking distance, distance. Which, was, right. yeah. which was, you know, that was just a... I remember yeah, when Jimmy yeah. Smith came to town one time, and him and Horace Silvers was at the grill, and Jimmy was at the hurricane. Mm. And uh, for some reasons, they switched. <laughs> really? <laughs> and Horace went up and played, up the grill, played, 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 played with his band, and Jimmy came down and played. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Whatever oh, way yeah. it was, you know, yeah, they, they yeah. first, yeah. yeah. And I followed yeah. both up. <laughs> they was going. But that's, the, that's the way it was in them days. Mm -hmm. And local musicians here, we're always of a high standard. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh has had, always had a high standard of, of jazz, especially jazz musicians. Yeah, I can testify to that because the first song that I ever learned as a child was a Billy Eckstein song. Okay. Everything I have is yours. Yeah. Everything I have is yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was Mr. maybe, I was maybe <laughs> six or seven years old. Yeah. My mother had me singing for her Elks Club. Is that right? Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah, Fortunately for both of us, when I turned 50, they had a big party for me, and I sang that song for her again. Oh, wow. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So you was a little prodigy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. I still like to sing. Okay. I still like to sing. That's, 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 that's my musical avenue, so to All speak. Right. I never got into too many instruments. And, okay. You know, I played a little bit of flute. And, I wanted to be like Eric Dolphy the next day. So yeah. I had, I had the discipline to practice. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, I played some African drums, but, you know, I didn't stay with that either. Okay. But, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, that early introduction as a, a child, how that stays with you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, over the years, and you don't realize the impact it has, but it's in you. It's, yes. it's in you. Yes. I, I, I've had... Uh, so many great experiences. When I was eight years old, I touched Louis Armstrong. Wow! Well, all right. Now this was somewhere. In, my my my. We would always go to Washington D.C. and visit my uh, uncle and aunt. And uh, my uncle always teased me uh, about uh, playing my trumpet. He would call it a whistle. You still playing that whistle? <laughs> <laughs> and I, and it, it really irked me. <clears throat> and uh, I wanted him to understand that it was a trumpet. Well, he had a surprise for me. And he and my aunt, and my mom and dad, and my sister and myself uh, were taken to s some venue. Uh, and I just remember it looked like it was a big stadium. And there I was. And here's, here's what I was exposed to. I was exposed to not only Louis Armstrong, but Big May Bell mm. and Sugar Child Robinson. Yeah. Mm. That's what was my exposure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was so enamored with what I saw because this man was playing my horn. Yeah. You understand? He was playing what I was playing, so mm -hmm. I had a kinship. And I was so mesmerized after the, the program. Uh, I kind of I was close enough, but I kind of wandered down to, and I just wanted to be close to him. I don't know, I was drawn to him. Yeah. And I just reached up and I touched him. He never said, oh, hello, son, or anything like that. He never mentioned mm -hmm. I mean, he was busy speaking, but I touched him. <laughs> How old were you then? I was eight years old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I touched that man. Yeah. And that was a big deal for me. 
course, my parents touched me when they're looking around, <laughs> trying to figure out what happened <laughs> where I, I had disappeared. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. that that was a moment, uh, a moment that stayed yeah. with me all my yeah. life. Yes, indeed. He touched one of the greatest musicians of all time. Of all time, yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah, that was quite an experience. Quite mm -hmm. an experience.